Okay, here we go. We're trying over again. <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody. All right, well, <laughs> we're getting a second chance at this. I hope you can hear us now. All right. Um, okay, how did I say it before? I don't know. But <laughs> I guess um, maybe second chances is maybe a great segue here. Um, so if you've been watching our episodes um, in the past, you've known that usually when Bert is on with me, there's some big turn in the journey. And uh, we do have some heavy news to share with you today. And I know it's not what anybody wants to hear, but um, we're going to talk about it very openly and uh, you may want to grab some tissues. <laughs> um, on Friday, um, let's back up a little bit. At our, our last um, prenatal appointment with our doctor, um, which was the Monday before last, two Mondays ago, um, we had met with our um, obstetrician. Uh, she did a belly scan, and I believe I shared with you, I know I shared with you that day, uh, that we um, we didn't get to see the baby, but she said it was because it was a tilted uterus and that it was just too early to be um, detected on her skin. Um, and I think I shared last week um, that it had made me a little nervous, and so I had booked an ultrasound with our fertility clinic because they were offering them up to um, 12 weeks. So last week was 10 weeks, and... Uh, the soonest they could get us in was Friday. On Friday morning, um, so just three days ago, we went in and um, the, uh, the doctor confirmed that there was no heartbeat and that the baby had stopped growing around seven weeks in about three days. So probably that ultrasound that we saw with the heartbeat around seven weeks and it was our eight week period, you know, uh, that was the last, the last time that we got to see our baby, baby's heartbeat and, and know that everything is okay. But probably shortly thereafter is when, um, it's, it stopped growing. Um, so this, uh, this was on Friday and, um, Bert and I have been privately grieving um, in dealing with everything. This is other than our immediate family, and you'll hear just a few of our friends heard about it. Um, you guys are the first to hear this news. Um, I hope you guys are, I hope that you, uh, okay, this is live, right? <laughs> um, okay, good. All right. Just want to make sure, <laughs> sure you guys were seeing this. Um, so um, let's talk about this a little bit. I mean, we're going to share some information with you um, as this channel is about the journey and miscarriage is unfortunately part of so many people's journeys. So it almost, it almost seems fitting that it's part of ours so that we can include it and be supportive of anybody else that's gone through it or will go through it in the future. Um, good. Thank you guys. So thank you for this. And it's, it's a tough episode and I totally understand. We totally understand if this is not the kind of mood you want for tonight, that's okay. This video is, um, going to be here, you know, as a, as a record of our journey and for people that need to be comforted and know that they're not alone when they're going through it. And for anybody that's wanting to be supportive of someone else going through it. Um, Kelly, thank you so much for being here. Um, Kelly's, Kelly's my best friend and, um, she was one of the first phone calls I made to share this. Um, we've talked about support systems so much and how important they are. And, um, you okay, bud? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um. And uh, anyway, so having that those people in place um, for you, so when you do start to hit these unfortunate milestones, um, sometimes you need that, that person there to check in on you. Um, this isn't just on, on the woman, um, as far as how hard it is. This has been very tough for, 
for Bert, obviously. <laughs> it's tough for the partner, and I want to make it really known here and important here. Fact is, like, if you know anyone, a couple um, going through miscarriage, check in on both of them. Um, okay, we're going to talk a little bit about um, our experience of it because uh, there's a lot of different things that can happen with miscarriage. So to be clear, this is considered a first trimester miscarriage, which um, I did a lot of reading over the weekend. <laughs> Wait, probably too much, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. Um, and sorry that I know that this is fresh news for you. We've, we have, a, you know, a little bit of chuckles in us only because there's been some time for us to already grieve. So um, please don't think that this is a very light thing for us to be doing or going through. It's certainly not. Um, neither, I, I have not been into the office at work. Um, I'm, we'll explain that a little bit more too, but um, thank you guys. I'm so sorry. Yeah, like I said, if, if this is not the vibe that you want for tonight, I, I totally understand. I totally get it. Um, I'm so sorry. We're praying for you and can't imagine how hard this is for you both. Thank you, Laura. We appreciate that. Oh, virtual hugs. Thank you, Austin. Thank you so much. Hugs actually feel so good right now. Um, thank you, Marcus. We are here for all of your journey. Never apologize for the bad news. Thanks, Marcus. Okay, so here's what we're going to get into. Um, and I'm going to give you full warning that I'm going to share some details that may be information you don't want to hear. Um, and before I get to those parts, I will try to warn you so that if you do want to turn this off and, and just revisit us next week, that's totally fine. So we'll, we'll just start by, um, this is a first trimester miscarriage, which, which can happen to up to <laughs> apparently 50% of, of pregnancies, which is seems outrageous, but a lot of times it happens before you, a lot of women even know they're pregnant. Um, that's an ectopic pregnancy. Uh, it's usually when the uh, embryo uh, plant implants into the fallopian tube, and basically because it can't grow there, it um, it just it ends. Um, and sometimes people don't even know. That usually happens by week five. Um, ours is considered a missed miscarriage, and that's because it was three weeks. Um, after it had stopped growing that we found out about it. Um, you know, we had seen a heartbeat, it's common, see that heartbeat around eight weeks, and then um, you don't have a follow-up appointment for sometimes four weeks. Um, ours was, you know, I, I had felt very nervous about our prenatal appointment and how we didn't see anything, and I, I scheduled an extra um, ultrasound just for my own peace of mind because I was getting very anxious about it. I was unable to uh, do the things that I normally enjoyed doing and um, just needed that peace of mind. But leading up to the um, ultrasound on Friday, uh, I, I started, I had um, spotting, which I hadn't had any spotting before. And usually spotting is normal, but then it was followed um, and sorry, this is, I'm, I am at this point going to start getting into some more um, detail and I will tell you why I'm going into the detail and then you can choose to listen if you want to or not. Um, uh, Austin, I'll get to your question in just a moment. I saw it. Um, but here's uh, the, the reason that I want to share this is because when I was over the past few days going through what I went through, there was not a lot of information out there. And we unfortunately had this experience on a weekend and doctors aren't always, you know, doctor's offices aren't always open on the weekends to answer your questions and treat you right away. So there was a lot of information that I needed to find out on my own with Dr. Google. <laughs> uh, Dr. Google did not <laughs> necessarily give me all the information I was looking for. So. What I did find were stories from other women who shared in detail what they experienced, and that's where I found uh, the most comfort and information, okay? So that's why I'm going to share what we went through, what I went through. Um, Austin, to get to your um, question, the difference between a miscarriage and a stillborn, that's a great question. 
Um, so a miscarriage is going to be, um, I guess a stillborn would be a miscarriage, but a stillborn is when it, the baby's been developed and has been birthed, but is not, um, not breathing, not alive, doesn't have a heartbeat. Um, where a miscarriage, um, especially if it's happening earlier in the pregnancy, like a first trimester, um, that would not be considered a stillborn because there's not a, a baby to deliver. Um, so I hope that it helps a little bit. Um, yes, yeah, sorry to be delivering this, this news, but thank you. Um, thank you for the hearts, the broken hearts. It's very accurate. Um, Okay, so um, I'm going to move forward with describing a few things um, that we experienced leading up to this. Um, I was still very optimistic we would see a heartbeat on Friday, but in the days leading up to it, I did experience spotting and Dr. Google and all the other, you know, everyone said, you know, spotting is normal, light cramping is normal, and that's what I was experiencing, which was um, spotting that turned into more of a, a brown discharge. Um, kind of looks like gritty, dirty sand, I guess. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, that was, you know, in my underwear and I, I went in on, on Friday and, and told him right before the ultrasound that those were my symptoms. He did it and, um, I, I knew right away. I knew right away when there was no heartbeat. And uh, when he, he measured it and I could tell on the, on the ultrasound um, that it was not the right measurement. And Bert? Uh, I honestly didn't know what was happening. Um, everybody was so quiet, which I was trying to pretend isn't anything different from the last time we were there. But in reality, last time, there were smiles. There were happy faces. And I was too glued to the ultrasound screen to even look around. Yeah. They tried, the doctor tried for, it felt like forever. It was probably in reality only a minute, maybe two minutes, I don't know. But I looked at the faces of the doctor and the two um, ultrasound nurses that were there and I could tell from their faces and they were extremely, extremely supportive and um, comforting in the moment and told us to take our time in the room and you know that um, the doctor would follow up with us later that afternoon uh, to discuss what happens next. So this is important. This is um, even if you've never been through it um, or you have been through it, this is what uh, your three options are. Um, especially during, I can't speak for, you know, second or third trimester options, but for first trimester, uh, especially with ours, which was, you know, a, a seven week size embryo. Um, and we were in week 10, so it had been three weeks, you know, we could suppose that. And, um, there were three options for us, which is, um, okay. Dilation and I wrote it down. Curatage. Nailed it. That was actually, yeah. Thank you. I had to look up how to say that word. Um, commonly known as DNC, this is a surgical procedure where um, they'll give you, I mean, there's more prep and, and recovery time than there is an actual surgery. Um, they'll give you general anesthetic. You'll be asleep. The whole thing takes 10 minutes. Um, they open um, up your cervix. cervix and go in there and very carefully remove the tissue. Um, and the recovery time is very short. And this is a very popular option because people can kind of start to move on a little bit quicker. The second option is to take um, a medicated route um, that speeds up the process to do it naturally. So it's it can either be an oral pill or a pill that goes in the vagina. And um, within about four or five hours, your body's body will dilate and everything will come out a lot quicker and the um and by everything gosh i'm talking about the uh the embryo itself the sac and a lot of blood okay 
The third option is to let it happen naturally. Our bodies did not always have the option to have surgery or medication to help with a miscarriage. Our bodies are built to do it on its own. Um, and what that means is basically the same thing as the medicated one, but it's going to take a lot longer. Your body is going to have contractions to squeeze it out um, over a longer period of time. So the doctor had called us on Friday afternoon after we you know, had some time to kind of let it sink in what was going on. He was incredible um, in comforting us and giving us all the information we needed. He was extremely patient um, and answered all of our questions. And what we decided, because this was about Friday at about three or four o'clock, um, we had plans to go be with friends that weekend at a lake house and we asked do you think it's a good idea to go be with friends or just be at home in case something happens and he said be with the support of your friends he encouraged us to to be be with our close friends um now we have a lot of close friends this is just one set of close friends i don't want anyone <laughs> to feel sad that i wasn't with them during this weekend this is the plans we had um so this was with six six other friends, three other couples, and uh, about a two and a half hour drive, three two two and a half, yeah. two and a half, three hour, yeah, two and a half hour drive um, to stay in their house, their lake house, um, river house, river house. Okay, so he encourages us to go and says on Monday we'll make a decision if we want to do DNC medicated or let it happen naturally. Now I remind you I had already been starting to have a discharge and cramping on Friday morning. I had a I had a hunch, I'm like, hey, I, th I think that there's this discharge, it's gonna continue, let's go pick up pads at the store. Cause when you're going through miscarriage, they tell you not to put anything up there as far as a tampon or a cup um, or douching. Um, so we picked up pads. Um, and you guys, I gotta give Bert like huge man points for this because he's like, I'll go get them. like. He he does not care. Like it doesn't bother him at all. And I, I gotta say, babe, you're you're pretty brave for them. I appreciate it. It's not a scary thing. Doing something for you. Yeah, thanks, babe. Of course. Okay, so we take off on our trip and uh it was just about six o'clock. I said, Hey, we gotta pull over, I need to use the bathroom. Um Thank you guys. I see your messages here real quick. I'll Lala, thank you very much. Thank you. John, appreciate it. Um, Kelly's saying, I'm glad you were able to keep your plans. Oh, CK, thank you. <laughs> Bert, you are literally the man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you are awesome, Bert, says Laura. Um, and your medical team sounds very supportive and kind. I'm so glad they're taking such good care of you. 100%. I honestly... The Advanced Fertility Center of Chicago. I, I like. I, I know. I owe them like the best possible Google review ever because they are they are just amazing. And especially in comparison to my obstetrician's office, who I didn't hear from basically all weekend. Yeah. So I got all my information, luckily, from my fertility clinic. I'm very thankful for them. Um, I'll, I'll also mention this here. So Kelly is saying, you know, for our missed miscarriage, they opted for the DNC and it was easier for her mentally to get over it and move on. And I think 100% this is usually what I, out of most of the other people that I have shared their experience with me, this is what people opt for most often. Okay. So we take off on our trip. Well, quick question for you. Oh, sure. If that was the option, if we had the, had the ability to get that done, would you have? Yes. I, I had basically told him that I would most likely be going with the DNC option on Monday when we returned from our trip or when he when they were their office was back. And we actually came back on Sunday and uh, he said, OK. And he also offered that if I, we wanted the medication, he'd just tell him and he would call it into the pharmacy. We don't even have to go in for something like that. You you go pick it up at your local pharmacy, you go home and you do it in your in the comfort of your own space. Um okay my sister lost her first people seldom talk about it once more you are helping others by talking in public thank you marcus paul thank you 
You two are the most wonderful. We are here to support you. We appreciate this so much. Um, okay. Um, we were on the way up. We pulled over, I had to pee, we went into the bathroom, and um, when I when I wiped, I realized that um, this miscarriage was happening naturally. We didn't have the option to do a DNC or the medicated route. Um, my body was ready to start doing it on its own. Um, that was really fucking scary. It's Friday, six o'clock, all the offices are closed. Um, I, we just had to go with, you know, the, the few things that they had told us that if it's, if it does start bleeding and that both the, the obstetrician's office and the fertility clinic, our doctor told us, you know, if it starts happening, the things to look out for are, um, if you're filling a pad, um, a full pad in less than an hour, that's when you need to go to the hospital. No, um, I was not filling it that fast, but I was bleeding quite a bit. Um, but it was not more than they had told, so we were fairly certain as what was expected, and we decided we're we're still going to continue with our trip to our friends, and we will just um, hopefully it won't be you know <laughs> or we can horrible. Make it the weekend, yeah. Well, hopefully our friends will be supportive and understanding, and we're we're going to try our best not to focus on on the miscarriage but we're gonna try and stay distracted and and let my body do its thing and manage it which is essentially what we did yeah we did um so when we got up there we made sure we we told our friends pretty quickly yeah as soon um, as we got everybody in the same room yeah someone had could kind of tell by the look on our faces that something was up um so they were extremely supportive i was not sure if they'd be like why the fuck did you come up here if you knew you were dealing with that and you're bringing you know the party mood down but we have great friends and immediately their eyes swelled up with tears and we got all the hugs we could possibly need in that moment and it was incredible absolutely they were with us um they were absolutely phenomenal in that moment and the rest of the weekend um so uh well, as you guys know, when we get bad news, I have a glass of wine, and that's what I did that night. And um, the bleeding continued. It was about 5 in the morning when I started to feel the very first um, contractions. That's when the uterus is actually trying to squeeze, just like in labor, it's um, it's squeezing to, to push, to push things out. Um, that sucked. Uh, woke up <laughs> to that, went to the bathroom and found that, you know, the, the flow of um, blood and now, uh, what is it? Clots. Clots. Blood, yeah, clots um, had started to, to pass. Um, and uh, we, you know, I, I was kind of in the bathroom for a while. Burton came, checked on me. And um, after kind of the pain had kind of like calmed down a bit, I was able to go back to sleep. Guys, you're going to be real proud of me here. The next morning we woke up, I had breakfast, and I went canoeing. <laughs> For what? Five hours? Five hours. Four hours? I don't know. I don't know. It seemed like a good idea. It was a good distraction. It's, it's honestly not a bad... I don't regret it, um, but it, like hindsight, I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you might be going, what? <laughs> um, we... We did, uh, we canoed, um, Bert was my, in my canoe and I told him, I'm like, just take it easy on me. Don't yell at me if I stop paddling <laughs> because there might be something going on. And he was extremely supportive. Um, we went at a very slow pace. It was not an overnight trip like we've done in the past. So we could just take our time floating down the river. We took a few stops for lunch and I just laid, you know, laid and the girls laid with me and they were just there with me. They were just present with me. And it was, um, we didn't have to talk about it. Um, though one of my friends did ask, why aren't you going in the water? And I explained to her cause I hadn't, we did not tell them that the miscarriage was, had started. We told them that we had gotten the news that the heartbeat had stopped and that it had stopped growing, but we didn't actually tell them that it was happening while we were there. Cause we didn't really want them to have that visual in their head. Yeah. Oh, giving, it, worry. Yeah. giving it to all you guys though no problem <laughs> <laughs> so anyway uh we 
we we canoed um we had a good time i actually only felt a, a few contractions so i would guess, i guess if i'm going to give someone um advice from personal experience and if you're going through a natural miscarriage i actually found it to be helpful to be up on my feet walking around or um canoeing in particular <laughs> very specific very, very specific um <laughs> No, but in reality, I, I, I do I do think um, my my worst moments was when I laid down, um, at, you know, and uh, I have found it to be comforting. I, you know, learning from the canoeing and being active, I, I found that, you know, in my worst moments when I got up and on my feet and, and moved around it, it helped. Uh, we made it back from our canoe trip, trip uh, no problem. But it was that afternoon after we got back that I started to feel uh, those strong contractions again. Um, I took a moment away from the group to go and lay down. And this is how I learned that laying down could make it worse, for me at least. Uh, Bert came and checked on me a little while later and, uh, and we decided, hey, let's get up and walk around, go see our friends, go talk with them. And that helped. Um, not sure how much I want to share about this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, we had dinner, um, and we played games, board games. It kept me distracted, kept us engaged, and plus, winning against all these guys like made me feel a lot better. You absolutely destroyed me at Azul. <laughs> like almost <laughs> lapped me by a hundred points. It was, I wasn't even letting her win. She just did. We were playing a game called Azul. It's a lot of fun. I'm gonna check in on the comments here real quick. Um, I can't even begin to imagine how scary it was. Um. It, it truly was very scary because while I was uh, on that break away from Bert and everybody in the room laying down, I started like looking up like what to expect because I didn't know how long would this bleeding last, how long would these contractions last. And I every article I found was like, if you're going through a natural miscarriage, it's going to hurt and there's going to be a lot of blood. I'm like, this does not help. When does it end? How much will it be? Like, what's the worst? And then I found a whole bunch of um, women's stories, actually. So they wrote about their experiences, a lot like I'm sharing with mine with you. And um, several of them said that it was labor-like contractions, um, like when you're, when you're having um, a baby. Uh, I was not looking forward to that, and it started to freak me out a little bit. And then there was also stories about women who passed clots the size of lemons. Now, deflated lemons, not full lemons. Oh, to be you never clear. actually mentioned that part. I know, I was but picturing a whole lemon, and I, I thought that sounded I also crazy. don't, I, I don't know, I mean, they said lemons, I yeah. assume it. Anyway, anyway. yeah. <laughs> some people said even larger than that. I started to freak out that I was going to be having this large sack of grossness come out of me. Um, either not in, gross. Thank you. Not it gross. It would have been gross, though. Maybe, but it's natural. It's your yes. body. So I was really worried that this would happen in our friend's bed or their bathroom floor or something like that. So I kind of started to freak out. And that's when Bert's like, let's go get distracted and, and play games and stuff. And I'm, I'm really glad about that. Oh, my gosh. OK. Um, sorry. Back to these comments real quick. You two are so strong. Yes, your friends are incredible. And you guys are incredible. I can't believe the, how many people are listening right now to this. I really thought there'd be a lot of people tuning out. So you guys are so strong for listening and understanding what people go through. So good on you. Colleen saying, I totally feel your pain. I chose natural. I didn't know that about you, Colleen. And ended up waiting for the longest three weeks of my life. Mm. I can't imagine that wait. The fact that ours came without us deciding, I mean, is a blessing in disguise. Um, the timing for us was, we turned to each other so many times and said that we are so lucky we went in for the ultrasound that Friday because could you imagine us on a canoe trip with our friends and all of a sudden they just start bleeding and didn't know why? Mm -hmm. We we acknowledged that several times. I'm so grateful you're talking about it. It is very hard to discuss. I love you guys. I love you too, Colleen. Oh my God. You are amazing. Thanks, Kelly. You are too. <laughs> wow, canoeing, you are a warrior. <laughs> Canoe, good choice. Being on the water was probably good. Something about the water is cleansing. Yes. Um, so I was wearing a, a pad on, on, like I mentioned, you can't put anything up there. That's the last thing that I want to be in the water is with a soaked pad of river water. So <laughs> no. that's why I wasn't in the water. Um, yes. Oh, yes. 100%. I've thought about that, too. When I was having the contractions, I'm like, 
I'm, I'm just prepping me for when I have the actual thing. Exactly. The actual baby. I don't mean to call it a thing. <laughs> <laughs> so competitive. 100%. Kelly, hi. Thank you for the love. John, hello. L Luria, we're all here for you. I appreciate that. Thank you. We love you. Okay, you guys. All right, we're almost through our story here. Um, so that night, that second night that we stayed, um, was la last night that we were staying, was uh, Saturday night to Sunday morning. It was um, about... Oh, I can't remember what time. I think I made it through the night. Just about. There was one or, once I woke up and you were gone, but you were back pretty quick. Yeah. I could hear you moving around. I didn't have a lot of pain that night um, in particular. And it, it just was like, okay, is it over? Um, you know, again, it was kind of like the unknown is very scary. Um, I, oh, this is going to be graphic. Um, there's a lot of, with your doctor, if when you have time, they give you the, the option to collect the embryo if you see it um, so that they can test it. 80% uh, of miscarriages in the first trimester are caused by chromosomal abnormalities. Um, and over and over again, you'll read it's not the mother's fault um, for first trimester. Well, any, any miscarriage is not the mother's fault. And I will want to emphasize here, even though I know that and I support that and remind other people of that, there is no way around the cycle of thoughts that will go through your head when you're going through a miscarriage. Should I have had that coffee? Should I, you know, I played in a soccer tournament before I knew I was pregnant? You know, is that what it was? Um, what was I doing exactly three weeks ago that could have caused this? But it's nothing. It's nothing I did. It's not the products I used. It's not the exercise I did. Um, it is, if, and I am already certain that if I were to send it away for testing, um, which we're opting not to do, um, I am certain it would just be chromosomal abnormalities. And um, the good news is that it's something like a very, very low ch percentage um, where you'll have two miscarriages in a row. And all of this is very comforting to know so that um, if we get pregnant again, which is actually a lot easier to do now that we've been pregnant um, on our own, that, you know, the next one will, will hopefully be our rainbow baby. Okay. So um, on Sunday, um, we're like, okay, we're going to leave early because, <laughs> well, we're both competitive, Bert. <laughs> <laughs> we both play soccer. Um, Bert's team had done soccer team had done very well this season, and he was hoping to get back for a soccer match. And this was all before championship shot soccer. Sorry, match. thank you. Championship match. Um, <laughs> his team was in first place, and and they wanted to get that title. So um, this was all before. This was our plan before we knew about the change in plans for the weekend. Um, but Sunday morning, I woke up and I said, "Hey, I'm I'm feeling a lot better." Um, I think I just want to get home and rest. Why don't you go to your soccer game? Now, Bert, do you want to tell him what happened to your soccer game? We won. No big deal. We just got a champion right here. Um, <laughs> he came home and uh, we watched Ted Lasso. We got some sushi. Um, I had a small glass of wine. Um, I didn't want to mess anything up because when it is painful, you can take ibuprofen or Tylenol. I've been taking Tylenol um, as needed, and it has been adequate most of the time yeah so uh last night um so you know these contractions and the bleeding and everything had continued with clots along the way the um thing that happened last night around i think it was twelve thirty. uh i didn't wake bird up for this i don't think did i tell you mm -hmm. that it you happened? told me this morning okay um i I wiped and, um, oh God. It's okay. Okay. You got it. And, uh, I, I saw the embryo. I saw the baby. And it, uh, looked just like on the ultrasound, surprisingly. It looked like a little gummy bear. Well, I, not in a tasty kind of way. Um, I don't know. It, it's a very hard thing. It's uh, it's like looking at a train wreck. It's hard not to look. 
Uh, at least that's what it was like for me. There's a lot of women who have a knee-jerk reaction just to get rid of it, flush it. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, it doesn't happen for everyone, and I think that there was a little bit of comfort in finding it um, at home on my own because when we went canoeing, uh, I had to change, you know, go to the bathroom in a porta potty and I had, you know, my friend's house, and I'm like, I just kept having this thought, like, I don't want to flush my baby down this porta potty or this my friend's toilet. Um, so I'm I'm actually kind of relieved that I didn't. Um, sorry for that very graphic detail. It's okay. That's part of it. That's part of it. Okay. You're so encouraging, babe. <laughs> okay. So, um, okay. Um, this is a good comment to help. Kelly said, we sent ours away for testing and the results came back inconclusive. No chromosome abnormalities, but we did find out that it was a boy. And I, yeah. I don't I think I'd want to find out. I don't think I'd want to know either. I think it's easier with just not knowing for us. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that, Kelly. I didn't know you sent yours away. Um, I think that would also make me really nervous to know it was inconclusive. That would, I, I yeah. I've heard that word too many times. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, unsure. Or unexplained. Unexplained. Yeah, I hate those words. Um. <laughs> CK likes our back and forth. That's great. Um, congrats on the win, Bert. Thanks. <laughs> Lots of congrats there. Bert's champion. Uh, in more ways than just on the soccer pitch. <laughs> Paul likes your storytelling. We won. <laughs> what else is there to need to know? Um, and don't apologize. Bert is right. Okay. Let's copy that one. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we watched Ted Lasso, which is at one of our favorite shows. Um, we watched a movie, too. We did. Oh, we watched Cruella de Vil. Oh, Cruella. Just was Cruella. Really good. Oh, yeah. Cruella. It was really, really good, actually. Yeah, that actually. was fun. Um, went to sleep. Last, yeah, last night I found the embryo. Um, this morning when we woke up, I was still laying in bed. I knew I wasn't going into the office. I'm like, take your time, Lynn. Be gentle on yourself. Um, and uh, as I was laying in bed, I was awake. Dr. Irani called. That's the doctor from the fertility clinic. Because I had emailed him yesterday to give him an update that it had started naturally. And I just... I'm like, I don't know if this is too much information or what in the email. And, uh, and I said, I, I just, I don't know what happens next. He, I must have been his first phone call, you guys. And he said, come in at 10 a.m. We'll do an ultrasound. We're going to check to see um, if everything has passed. So um, this morning at 10 a.m., Bert and I went to the fertility clinic. And, um, and uh, it, I, I get, it was a huge relief, honestly. Huge. Uh, they said the sack had passed, which means it didn't come out looking like a lemon. Mine apparently broke down into smaller pieces, and I had seen a bunch of clots and stuff, but thank God it wasn't a giant lemon. Um, and they said that the baby, they confirmed the baby had passed, so I wasn't delirious at 12.30 in the morning thinking I, what I was looking at was something else. Um, there was relief. There was a... Mm-hmm. It, it, it was knowing... It's almost like a confirmation. Confir- right? The confirmation, yeah, hundred um, percent. That that my body had taken care of it on its own. Um, the bad thing is uh, that it, you know, we do have to let it finish on its own, which means my I could keep bleeding for for two two weeks as long as four weeks and. Very light, right? It's supposed to. Mm-hmm. I hate my period. I hate I hate that part of being a woman so bad. And anyway, but. Knowing that we're going to be able to restart, um, and it's it's crazy like, learning all of the things I learned and stuff. But I'll actually ovulate before I get my next actual period, and we could get pregnant um, in the next few weeks if we wanted say to. That was... But yes, yeah. he he didn't recommend it because the lining of your uterus is not it needs to finish. Mm. Uh, and kind of go through a full cycle so that it can get to its its normal right. normal lining size. Um, <laughs> Kelly, hundred percent. Periods <laughs> do suck. Absolutely. John is saying Cruella definitely one of the better movies this year. Oh yeah, Ted Lasso, my favorite. Absolutely. We we watched the first season twice and we cried so hard. It was <laughs> just so good. Um, inconclusive is such a frustrating word. Hundred percent all around. Uh, Cruella was really good. Um, yeah, 
It is, honestly, periods. It's like, ugh, is there anything we can do to make them like better? I don't know. Just gotta be something like, we should get like free cookies when we're on our period. <laughs> Uh, Just I'd, put it out there. I'm going to make a campaign for it. I'd vote for that. Okay. Thanks, babe. Um, yeah. So um, this is a great question, Luria. Um, excellent question, actually. Um, so I think um, we're, we're ready. We're ready, I think, to move on um, and try again. Honestly, if he hadn't told us this morning that it's best for us to wait, I'd be like, we're, we're just going to start trying. Okay, not, maybe not right now because it's kind of gross. Well, and I don't think it would be very comfortable for, for That's you. That's true. I'm, I am still... Or um, maybe even. Yeah, so even though everything has passed, um, let, let's finish there. Uh, so what? why am I still bleeding? Um, there's still... My uterus is still uh, larger than... Uh, pre-pregnancy so it needs to start shrinking and so it's going to be contracting um and it's going to continue pushing um blood and other fluid out um it is like a pink uh kind of clear bright red um just to be clear like if it starts being brown or if if it increases and, and it becomes heavy those are signs that maybe there's an infection so if you're going through this those are things to look out for that's usually something that they cover in all those support articles yeah. and stuff. It's like a fever was another thing to look out for. Fever chills, yeah. yeah. Um, so you you know do be aware that there there's there are other um, things that could go wrong with miscarriage. You know as far as your yourself goes, and that you do need to go to the hospital for. Those are the things to go to the hospital for is the the infection um, typically. Um. <laughs> Kelly, they sell pads in the incumbent. Um, incompetence aisle in the store near me. I, you know, they. I think that's normal for most places, but they're like side by side, not like integrated, right? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should just, I mean, just pull on the 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 underwear. Oh, the oh, the, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, rainbow baby on the way, hundred percent. One of my best friends lost her first. She had two since then. Hope and hugs for you guys. 100%. Thanks, Susan. Um, <laughs> hold on here. Bert, do you vote for free cookies so you don't have to chase cravings during her period? <laughs> no, I just know that she won't eat all the cookies. That means I get some, too. That's very true. That's 100%. <laughs> absolutely. But Bert's I would chase down any crazy craving or any craving you wanted. Thanks, babe. Yeah. Unless it involves pickles, because pickles are gross. Oh, my God. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, free cookies would be a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so... Um, emotionally. Emotionally. I think that, yeah, I think we're ready. I think, obviously, there'll be a grieving period still. I 100%, because I think this weekend we purposely tried to distract ourselves from mm -hmm. physically what was going on. And I think the emotional, while it's definitely crept up, and we've had those moments. I mean, th there's been tears. There were definitely there tears. There will still be. There was sobbing. Um, there were long, long, long hugs. Um, and there will be more of those, for sure. Um, and I, I don't know how long it'll take. You know, I think that's, that's part of this whole thing is, like, um, you just don't know uh, what's coming next or how fast things will move. Yeah. But we do we do know that we're we're looking good as far as our um, physical part of it. You know, there's no infection or anything. And so next step physically in about two weeks, what they're going to do is a blood draw um, and they're going to start to measure my HCG levels. Um, those are the levels that indicate whether you're pregnant or not. When you pee on a stick, that's what it's it's doing is testing your HCG levels. So in two weeks, we're hoping, you know, HCG is back down to zero or low, or very low. Um, and that kind of gives us the green light that we're we're going to be able to move on and start trying again um, when we're when we're ready emotionally yeah. and yeah emotionally, and I think we we will be by then. I, I think so too. I think this is this was a devastating thing. T I think you know going th going through a few of the things that go right when you find out you're like so next March we won't have a baby like that was the first thing that went through my head. It's like it won't be next March. It wasn't that we're not going to have a baby. Mm -hmm. I I I hundred percent think we're going to have a baby, 
Um, but there are parts of me that are like, okay, well, I really do hope it happens quickly again, you know, and all these things that people are saying that it, that you can get pregnant right away afterwards, um, is true. Um, but if it takes a long time, God, I'm really tired of this journey. <laughs> I am so thankful that I'm sharing it and it's, you know, it's a beacon of hope for some people and that it, it helps other people be supportive of others. And I, I am proud of that very much, but I am like, just give me a baby already. <laughs> <laughs> but I am, I'm, th that was one of the things we turned to each other and said, you know, us sharing our journey, um, it, it almost feels more complete now that we've gone through this. Um, so that's kind of the silver lining is that now, I mean, my channel's covered everything from a first hand experience. <laughs> All right, not everything, but this no. is definitely a big one. Yeah. We haven't had twins yet. <laughs> we haven't hit that part, but we'll, we'll get there. Please don't we'll start there. with this twin thing again. Oh my God. Oh my God! What is Kelly saying here? They're talking about cookies. Okay. <laughs> and apparently, Loria wants to fight me over pickles. Oh my gosh! Okay. <laughs> um. Wow. I did miss a lot. Well, you know, you know, you know, it's been a good stream when we get onto the, you know, <laughs> the talk about food. <laughs> We've had that happen quite a bit. Um, okay. Um. <laughs> hashtag give them a baby <laughs> um one of the best uh hashtags i've seen you know after doing a ton of reading this weekend was um hashtag miss courage oh i like that yes is it spelled like ms or is it no M -I -S -S? like like miss carriage but miss oh, okay. courage miss courage she nice if it was like miss courage like mrs courage yeah yeah that could be another way to do it <laughs> um I look forward to your diaper changing content. Yep, we'll definitely include that. Well, Bert said in one of his dad support groups that there was a really gross like week where. Oh, it was like post after post was like, it was, it was diapers. It was it was dirty diapers, gross. and it was like the first ones, which apparently are like tar. Um, and uh, yeah, it was pictures, and that's always a fun thing to see, you know, when you wake <laughs> up. But I guess I gotta use that at some point. Yeah. Oh my god. Um, hey, this is fun. Twins are <laughs> awesome. Speaking from a twin's perspective. See? I know, I know, I know, <laughs> I know. It's a built-in best friend. <laughs> um, we'll see. We'll see when we get to that. Yeah. Who knows? You know. One is fine. One is Two fine. is great. Oh Three is god. too many. Here we go again. Um, Miss Courage. Love that. Yeah. Maybe that's what I'll change the title of the live stream to. Um, so guys, yeah, thank you for listening, uh, to all these details being so supportive. Um, Bert's got the dad jokes already. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's, are you kidding me? He's had them since I'm, the day I met him. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll tell you a few things in case you're wondering, like how, if you, if a friend shares with you that they're going through this, um, how, what to say, what not to say, um, you're going to feel like you want to do something for them. A lot of people feel that way. It's natural. Um, you don't need to do anything. Just checking in and just saying, you know, how are you feeling? Um, a hug. Hugs are amazing. If you're physically around them, hugs feel really, really good. If they like hugs, some people don't. Um, but God, it felt so good to hug um, our friends. Um, I've, I, you know, I, I was, I was very, I did not want to share this right away. I just wanted to be left alone. Um, so, you know, don't be checking in too often, but, um, you know, the next day or two days after, you know, if they share it with you, that's a great time to just say, Hey, how are you feeling? And, um, those text messages were really helpful today mm -hmm. when I got those yesterday too. Um, and Saturday. So, just checking in. That's all you have to say. And, um, you know, I'm so sorry. That's great, too. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. Even if you're like, I don't know what to say, you can tell them that you don't know what to say, but that you're that you that you're thinking of them. Um, sharing other people's stories that they got pregnant um, afterwards, I found it helpful personally. Um, it gave me hope. So I, I really did appreciate when people shared that with me. Um, when other people share their miscarriage experiences with me, that was also very helpful. Um, I didn't know who to reach out to 
about it like because I I wanted to have somebody that went through it naturally and I didn't know who did um I think one of the biggest things knowing that my friends went through miscarriage before I didn't understand the three different options that they had I I didn't understand what DNC was I didn't know there was a Medicaid and I didn't know really that you could do it naturally and what that meant um so I think you know if if you've been through it and know someone else that's been through it maybe offering to talk to them about it if if they need it um that's also really helpful too and everyone's different of course but that would be those would be the things from my first-hand experience that I, I would recommend um don't say things like i don't know what are the things not to say i don't know we really like, didn't experience anything of people. like don't be dismissive of their feelings don't tell them you know to feel better soon encourage them to grieve and have their time you know to to process it um mm-hmm. don't don't speed it up don't tell them to get over it for sure um i don't... know that everybody's process is different yeah some people are very private mm-hmm. oh my gosh um we have okay do you, did you have you been reading this? i read that one yeah this one funny. Oh, okay let's see I was babysitting my niece, and my brother-in-law wanted to do a fake tattoo on her bottom, so when my sister came home, she would find it while changing the diaper. Just remember <laughs> that when it's time. So not let you babysit our kids? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. That is really funny, actually. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. My sister and luckily my mother both got pregnant afterwards. It's, it's very, like, yeah, the percentages of get, having a miscarriage two in a row... They said it was something like between one and five percent, and that's you know that's extremely comforting. I don't know how true it is, but you know to read that gives me a lot of hope. Take it. Yeah. Um, thanks, Paul. I'm glad. Um, yeah. Well, Luria, sometimes people don't know what to say, so they just say the first thing that comes to their mind and don't really put it through a filter first. You know, type one of those types of things. I would say if if you're uh, actually not at all sure what to say at all, just say I'm sorry. And just don't say anything. Yeah. Don't say anything and else. Leave it at that. Sometimes you, you that's the easiest thing. You don't have. There's. You can't do anything to fix it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna take this off. I just keep messing with it. <laughs> um, you can't do anything to fix it. So just being there as as support is the best possible thing. Um, and let them know that you can reach out anytime. Um, our Bert sister, she offered to buy us dinner this week, which was extremely sweet. But. Culver's, here we come. <laughs> we're, we're fine. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be all right. Yeah. Damn, I just lost babysitting privileges. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you guys are, um, you guys are the best um, for for listening and being so supportive, and you know the community, the live streaming community, and everybody that follows our story and um, everything here. Um, a huge, huge shout out to you guys. And, um, got it. Oh, Kelly, by the way, we had Papa Murphy's this weekend. I thought of you and I was like, I almost took a picture and sent it to you because I know how much you love it <laughs> <laughs> or don't love it. I had no idea what Papa Murphy's was. I, it was, I think Kelly had to teach me and then, oh, really? Uh, yeah. And then Beth was like, we're having Papa Murphy's. I'm like, I know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> it's delicious pizza. We are Lita trained supporters. That's very (laughs) true. Yes. Lita definitely prepares us for uh, these kinds of things. Yeah. (laughs) She said, oh my God, ew, why would you do that to yourself? (laughs) That's so funny. Okay. um, I was so, I was, I was so terrified guys of, um, of doing this uh, live stream today. I don't, I think this is the hardest episode ever that we had to prepare for. Mm -hmm. Um, And having, you know, three whole days, you know, usually these things for some reason, all we always get our news on Mondays and it's just like, oh, we're just speaking from, you know, straight from here. But there was so so much time to think about how I would um, deliver the news and how I would share and what what would the reactions be and would people watch. Um, You guys have made this extremely, it's almost therapeutic. Um, yeah, I would agree. Yeah, and I think I think um, it helps us. I hope it helps helps you in some way, maybe. And um, I thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. And if you are watching this and you're going through a miscarriage, just know, um, you know, you are so not alone. There are so many people that went through it, 
and and when your rainbow baby comes it'll be beautiful okay all right let's do a last check-in on these comments because i feel like it's getting silly and that's just on brand for for this <laughs> Um, okay, now everyone wants Culver's. Okay, cheese curds for the win. Oh my god, you guys. Um, Marcus, do you even have Culver Culver's over there? He's just so sweet. He's like, thank you for doing this episode. <laughs> um, this is powerful. I'm so glad you're sharing with us. Thank you. <laughs> okay, just to get Kelly all worked up, I want to go get Papa <laughs> Murphy's too. <laughs> That's perfect. That's great. Um, I imagine this was hard. You have to say it out loud, but that's okay. We're here to catch you. Mm. <laughs> Don't cry, Lynn. Thank you, Susan. Okay. All right. Um, we weren't sure, you know, if we would go into this much detail, but I'm glad that we did and that mm -hmm. you guys, um, were here to share and support. Okay. Thank you for sharing this, Lynn Ambert. There's no Culver's in Washington? Oh, what a shame. Well, you know, we'll put some in a box and send it over to you. <laughs> Mail you some cheese curds next time we go to Wisconsin. <laughs> Gross. Could you imagine what those are like when they arrive? Like, be just a one block of cheese. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, we are going um, to... Oh, my God. I'm going back to these Papa Murphy comments here. It's slave labor pizza. <laughs> I am paying full price to cook it myself. Oh my god. I don't care how good the dough is. Kelly, you're cracking me up. Thank you for lightening the <laughs> lightening the mood a little. Yeah. All right. Um I don't know what next uh Monday will be like, guys, but we will I will continue to share our story. Maybe we will um I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna talk about next Monday, but we'll we'll Figure chat. It out. It'll be something good, hopefully a little bit lighter and less bad news. All right, we're going to sign off. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, pull up my credits, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.